Hello, good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. It's Monday. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And this is Terry Harden. Hi, everyone. Uh, Walt Disney's legendary Imagineer, uh, Jim Henson Muppeteer, and I am an international trademarked artist and speaker. Is that enough? <laughs> Uh, feel free to uh, check me out on Wikipedia. I have not one, not two, but three pages. And also, if you Google me, just step back because there's a lot that I've done. I'm actually quite surprised at how much I've done. Um, yeah, just a lot of stuff. If you saw the thumbnail today, you saw me with my dear friend, Joshua Schaefer. Joshua did a chronology of my life and he's always adding to it. It's about 20 pages long. That's right. And my husband, based on uh, Joshua's chronology, just cut my reel. And it's 20 minutes long. Not that you're going to be sitting through the entire 20 minutes. He did do it in little modules. But the point is, is there's a lot of me that uh, is still, you know, stone unturned. This channel is basically just the opportunity. Terry TV is where I talk about so little subjects. And I, I got to be honest with you, as I look for a subject today, I just didn't know what to talk about. I actually kind of wanted to talk about, um, is it called Mobius or Morbius? Morbius. Because uh, we, we finally got to watch that film. And uh, it got one star. And I thought that was harsh. And uh, I was going to talk about that, but maybe I'll talk about that another time. But then I decided that I'm getting a lot of negative vibrations from D23 and a lot of positive vibrations from the Chalk Walk. But basically this channel, if you like to um, like, share, and subscribe, I invite you to do so. You're, you get a grab bag of items. So let me warn you about that. It's a grab bag of items. My career spans through the movie industry. I did Ghostbusters, Men in Black. And also I'm a Disney Imagineer who designed uh, Dragon Slayer and worked with a team on um, Big Thunder, both of those for Paris. So um, among other things, I do collectibles. I do one of a kind's. Um, I'm working on my own art now. Just Google and you'll see what I mean. It just rains upon you. That's if you're curious. If you're not curious, don't be curious to stay here. And most of the time I, I give some thoughts of wisdom or I talk about a subject that happens to be on my mind. Uh, I was, like I said, going to put Mobius up, but then D23 is really getting to me, guys. Uh, I'm finding out from vendors. So what happened to me in a nutshell is that I was supposed to have a booth at D23 and they basically told me, thank you, uh, but no thank you. And not that it was anything personal. Okay. Don't let me infer that that was the case. But they basically forgot about me, which is surprising because um, I've been there every year as a guest. So, nah, what are you going to do? You know, I'm in good company. I hear, I heard from one of the people on Terry's Tribe today. That's my Patreon page. I heard from one of the members of Terry's Tribe that the voice of Stitch also was not, did not get a booth. And this just shows you I'm in good company because the voice of Stitch, it's Stitch's 20th anniversary. Why not invite him? Now, there is the off chance that as we speak about this, and I've spoken a lot about it because he really needs to be there. He really needs to have a booth because it's Stitch's 20th anniversary and he's the voice. So this is really not cool, you know, that D23 has overlooked him. Now, it's not cool that they overlook me, too, because apparently it's going to be about Disneyland Paris, but I'm kind of used to it a little bit. I am the come here, come here, get away, get away Imagineer, and they usually don't reach out to me unless they really are up against it and they need to catch up on a deadline, right? So uh, they do do that, and I do do that, and I do love the Disney brand, but you know, this D23, I've never been a fan of the convention. If I can't go as a guest, I don't usually like to go. This Friday, I'm going to go, I think. I'm on the fence about it. And I'm going to talk to my client. I'm I'm not really happy at the way I'm hearing certain vendors are being treated. And um, it may be a good thing that I don't have a vendor table or booth. 
but uh, it's frustrating to me because the vendors tables, especially the Disney who sell the Disney fans who sell the Disney fans are going to be some of your best bargains and your best options to meet people that you care about. You want to see that you might not be able to get into a panel. D23, in all fairness, has done some changes that I think look admirable. Getting rid of the sorcerers, as I've said before, is a great idea. I really was not a fan of the sorcerers group. If you were a sorcerer, I'm sure you were. But uh, too many sorcerers were eBayers, and they would go in like carrion and pick the stores clean. And then those of you who are super fans that are, you know, uh, VIP member, or you're just have a regular membership of D23, there was nothing for you to get unless you went to vendors row. So, um, I'm hoping that this early bird thing that they asked you to do, which was to choose what panels you want was a way for them to make sure that they've got a room big enough to accommodate most of you. This is what I'm hoping is the case. All right. But, uh, but I am heartbroken because I'm hearing there's a lot of stuff coming across my bow that is just mean spirited. And I just don't know why they would be so mean. I just don't understand it. I don't know why you need to be mean to the people who want to be a part of this. They're not money-based. These Disney people who sell Disney to Disney um, aren't about the money. They're about getting you the thing that you've been looking for, for a very long time. In my case, I wanted to show off my Rolly Crump chess set because uh, there's a lot of high end, um, there's people who spend quite a bit of money there and the Rolly Crump chess set is going to be a great investment. So I wanted to get an idea. I wasn't, I, my original idea was to take names who wanted to purchase the various tiers. I was going to pre-sale. Unfortunately, it's not going to happen because I had some family health issues that I had to take care of. And so the chess set has been sorely neglected, but I'm still going strong. I'm working on the fourth piece. And what I was going to do is take my part of the table, lay the chess set out and show you the chess pieces and then ask you to sign up if you are interested in keeping your finger on the pulse of this chess and let me know if you might be interested in knowing the price of the entire chess set. Now, the reason I wanted to do this was because I think it's going to be very limited, this chess set. It's probably only going to be five chess boards or 10 chess boards based on the results of that research. How many people are going to want this chess board? I don't think I'm going to do more than 10. And of the full chessboard, because first of all, you got to have the real estate to put it up. I've mentioned this before, because the pieces are five inches or higher. They're like five and a half inches tall. This is what Rolly really wanted. And they really are beautiful pieces. They're coming out really great. Uh, in fact, if you'd like, um, sorry, I went quiet there, didn't I? I'll show you the latest piece, which is the bishop. This is the bishop right here. Here he is. This is the chair that Roly uh, did. This is his Museum of the Weird. And you can see it's just beautiful. The colors are bone and um, are bone and blood red. So if I set them on my table here and I cut to this camera right here, you can see a little better. We'll shed some light on the subjects. There we go. That just kind of helped to get some, just let me angle the light. It's in the frame a little bit, but bear with me. Anyway, here you go. There they are in uh, bone or blood red. Okay. They're really beautiful. This is the bishop. Here's the back. See, really pretty. If I just set it like this, you could kind of see too. See, get it. Anyway, they're really cute. You can see that they're tall. They're real big compared to a normal chess piece. But um, so the goal is to find out what tier you'd be interested in. But basically what I'm saying is if you're interested in the Museum of the Weird at all, I was just going to collect names, ask your emails, and put you on a special list to keep you uh, in the loop on when these are going to be available. When I finally decide the price of the huge chess set, the full chess set, 
but also the price of the other two tiers. So let me just explain to you a little bit uh, because D23, what I was looking for was a spot at a booth where I could just get this data. Okay. I was also hoping to sell my little Cheshire cat, but there seems to be some restrictions on selling this year. So I may not be able to do that, but if I could find the corner of a table where I could set the chess up, up, you guys could actually hold these, look these over and see how beautiful they are because photos just don't do them justice. You know, they just, they just don't. It's a little dark. So let me just hit with this light so you can see, but there they are. So you can see them better now. Stop moving them around. But the point is this, guys, that I was going to just let you pick them up, hold them. These are the art proofs so that you could see the quality of the chess set and then decide if you want to be in tier one, which is the full chess set. If you wanted to be in tier two, which is to get a representation of each figure, that would be six figures plus a certificate of authenticity and a custom box. And then the last one is a book. So if you get the whole chess set, the book comes with it. But the book would be the third tier for those of you who say, well, I'd really love to have it, but you know, life is, you know, my budget is my budget. So it's to get everybody to who loves this. And this is this is the first time that Roly's stuff has been dimensionally done and he chose me. So I'm really excited about it. But I was hoping to be able to have a booth so you could come over and give me your name and let me know, like a one-stop thing on Friday. And it was only going to be Friday. But it doesn't look too promising for me to even get a corner of a table. So I'm thinking of popping these in my, my bag. And then you can find me. You can say, do you have the chess pieces? And you can look at them that way. I won't be bringing the board, but I will be bringing some chess pieces to you to handle and look at. And I'll just walk around the floor. You know, because I don't know what else to do at this point. Um, I also, I'll be working with an associate of mine, um, my friend Frank. And Frank and I have developed a new project as well. And we'll be kind of uh, showing that off as well as we walk and talk. That's kind of what's going to happen Friday. I don't think I have another choice because D23 has backed me up against the wall. And you got to make lemonade out of lemons, don't you? I mean, this is why I think that I do this. I think that this is a way to tell you that you've got to not give up. And believe me, I'm thinking of, you know, I'd much rather sit outside of D23 and just talk to people as they go in. I'd be out in the fresh air. You know, I'm just, I'm just not feeling it. I'm not feeling it. And that's what's so sad is that I'm just, I'm just not feeling it. So... I will make my way down there and we'll see. I'll probably, you know, I don't, I don't know. I'll stand in line with everybody. Else. I don't know. I don't even know how it works, but my enthusiasm, as you can see, is about like here, not here about doing it. Cause it just seems like every time I turn, there's a door closed in my face. So after a while you just go, Ugh, is it really worth it? And you sit there and you say, I don't think so. You know, I kind of don't think so, but uh, here they are one more time. You can take a look at them here. And if I give you some light, you can see them here, but this is the latest piece that I finished. This is, this is the Bishop. You can see that the rich red is something. This blood red is really cool as is the bone clearer in the bone, of course, but these are the colors that really chose. And this blood red is really blood red. I just love the fact that it's blood red. So there you go. Anyway, there it is. You may have thought you got past me telling you about Terry's tribe, but uh, 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 no, you didn't. And the reason you didn't is because how important it is that you join the tribe and be a part of it. Today we did a raffle and you may have saw this, this wonderful whirly giggy thing right here. This is our um, treasure chest that I do once a month. It's just that I have a garage full of items. And so every month we do a opportunity drawing for some of the stuff that's in my garage. That was the original plan. Okay. Then the patrons as beautiful people as they are as great as they are as awesome as they are. They started to send me things to put in the tribe to uh, put in the opportunity drawing. And now it is a universal 
opportunity draw, drawing of biblical proportions. Uh, things come in the mail that are absolutely amazing. Uh, some of them are made. Most of them are things like they may get an extra pin for the tribe. And uh, and then the, uh, the drawing um, occurs. So... Uh, great thing. Just, just so wonderful that everyone has decided to be a part of this. In fact, so much so that you can't see it behind me, but there are stacks of things that they sent. <laughs> They're just lovely. So why am I telling you this? Uh, for $5 a month, it is a membership site. For $5 a month, you can be a part of this. I don't do a yearly membership. And the reason I don't is because if you don't like it, I want you to be able to get out easily. It's not that I think you'll get out easily, but I know that people's money is important. So I have this portal at $5 a month. That is my beginning tier. You can go up $10 a month. You can take a peek at my behind the scenes. My challenges with that this year is they've changed a little bit on Patreon. So now I'm trying to figure out how to upload. So those $10 a month, there's luckily they're very sweet and uh, patient with me because I couldn't post because I had done all these drafts and then I would go in and write the title and then post. It made it just a little simpler for me to stack my drafts. And now I can't find my drafts. So I know this is making no sense to you, but your voice needs to be heard. It's a community of people that help each other. In fact, uh, you also saw on the little thumbnail for today's announcement is I'm celebrating 30 years of Children's Hospital Orange County or CHOC. Now, CHOC is very special. I've only been with it five of those 30 years, and my team is celebrating the Mickey's OUC O-U-A-C Walkers, that's my team, is celebrating their 10-year anniversary. 30-year uh, anniversary for Chalk and 10-year anniversary for Mickey's O-U-A-C Walkers, my team, actually happened during the pandemic, but of course, nothing was allowed during the pandemic. So this Saturday, we are going to be at California Adventure Park getting our dance shoes on, I guess, and um, partying down because uh, Disney, for whatever reason, or Chalk, for whatever reason, the decision was made, whatever it was, I don't even uh, begin to figure out why, but uh, they decided we weren't going to do a 5K this year. We always usually do a 5K. And uh, we don't do it this year. And for the first time, our team and its captain, Sharon Flee Fleegan, Fleegan, Fleegan. I always call her Fleegan, and she's so sweet to let me say that. But it's Fleegan, the Fleegan, <laughs> the Fleegans. <laughs> anyway, I just love her last name, so I like saying it a lot. Anyway, Sharon is a wonderful, generous person. And for the first time, our team is in first place. And it looks like we might end up in first place. We're all really uh, trying to keep ahead of team number two. Now, here's the reality. She loves team number two as well. And so should they overpower us and she becomes number uh, second again, which she always seems to be, uh, that's great. But I, I am tenacious this year. I want her to get first place team donations. It's a, it's a dream of Sharon's, our team captain. And she's so generous to a fault. She's always so supportive with her heart and everything about her is just uh, wonderful. She is just a darling, darling lady. And I would like to see her win. What does she win? I don't know. A pat on the back. She doesn't even care about that. I just know that this was something that she dreamed of when I first joined the team and we're all in it to, to, to win it. So you can donate to a team member or you can donate to the team. But in any case, uh, we're, we're in first place and it all goes to Children's Hospital and we're going to celebrate it all together on Saturday. And it's super exciting. I'm just like this with anticipation. And the, the, the Patreon page, still have it up here, the patrons were responsible for contributing over $600 uh, to my uh, personal page which is a fundraised on Patreon. 
And uh, that money went in my account. I tried to talk to the captain about filtering it through, but she said, nope, 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 Terry. You put anything that comes through the tribe, anything comes from a tribe member goes directly into your account. And then it all is team earnings. So I want to thank you for that. But but the Patreons are just that generous, just that sweet from from a couple of bucks to a few hundred but whatever. It was just so kind of you. Never expected it. Did a couple of opportunity drawings to raise the money and I'm going to do it next year for her too and probably throughout the year for you guys. Uh, and I'll do a couple for the public too. But the way to get in on everything, all the cool stuff, all the fun, in a nutshell, too late, is join this page. Patreon.com slash Terry Harden and get in this community. You're going to feel so good. Your heart is just going to beat with joy. You're going to go in thinking you're non-Disney, thinking you're not, you know, you're not an artist and they're going to embrace you with so much caring and love. You're going to go, man, why did I wait so long to fall in this feather bed of kindness? Just a soft, comfy feather bed with a beautiful quilt and, uh, and uh, great people to help you with anything you might need help with or you will be able to help others with something they need help with. And um, it's a lot of fun. So I really want you to go check it out. Lend your voice. Please join us. We're, uh, we're, we're, we're almost to 100 patrons. And I got to do something special when we hit 100. Um, I, was gonna, I think I said on my goals that when we hit 500, I would do the chicken dance or the happy dance or something. But I got to do something when the, the members hit 100. But that is not my goal. My goal is to get the right people in the right community. And this one is so good. And I'm there. But I am. I started it, the patron page, because I was basically drafted. So I did it for my friend Michelle in London because my friend Michelle in London was a patron herself. And I just felt that I wanted to thank her for recommending me. But um, now, at the time, I didn't know even what to do. I was dog paddling. And now uh, what I'm learning from everyone uh, in Terry's tribe is that uh, I basically just kind of guide, just kind of say, okay, I noticed this hand up, but everybody does it. We have an amazing guy named Darren. He's a terrific interviewer. We've got uh, uh, Deanna who loves cats. So we talk a lot about cats. We have Holly Mack, two beautiful children, and they love Lego, as does my friend Joe love Lego. Randy loves Tigger. Uh, Connie Lane, who was an ambassador to Walt Disney, always giving us Walt Disneyisms, which is lovely, and telling us stories about that. Matt Mason, who we found out wrote several books, um, and so uh, poems, uh, poetry books, and they're just lovely. He he read a poem to us the last time when he came, brand new member. But we have just amazing, amazing Ron Kubala, who's a painter. Uh, people on the. UK side, which are great. Liz Reed, who's always telling us about Disneyland Paris and how my dragon is doing. Just Bella, the beautiful Bella, gives us a joke or two. If I didn't name you in the tribe, you know I love you. But the point is, we've got all walks of life, not just Disney, not just movies, anything you want to do. The other day we talked about golf with Naomi because she hadn't golfed in a while and she was helping us to understand why. OK, because I'm not a golfer. I wasn't like, why, Naomi? No, I was like, Naomi, explain to me the joy of golf. And she did. She was just really, really generous with that. And it was fun to learn about golf through the eyes of a golfer. So all kinds of cool stuff happening here. And uh, and I hope you'll join us. But the 30th of chalk is just a very generous thing. And uh, and it's cool. So that's why I decided today to talk about a little bit about chalk. If you're going to be there, please look me up. Um, I won't be wearing my fabulous coat. I'll be wearing my team shirt. And they want us to maybe wear mouse ears, but mouse ears don't fit me. The, the barrette hurts because my head is too big. <laughs> Watch it. And the, the the beanie sits on top, like those little propeller beanies. Did you ever see the original Ghostbusters with the gorilla? It, it That's the way it sits on top of my thing because my dreadlocks are too big. So, um, but look for my dreadlocks and my winning glasses and my, 
my killer smile. And if you're at the chalk walk with another team, please come up and say hi to us and say hi to my team. We've got some great people in it. And uh, I'd love to, to see you there. I'm there Saturday. I'm also Saturday there most of the day. I'm going to be hanging around downtown Disney. And also want you to know that I'm probably not going to be broadcasting on Friday because I have to get ready for chalk. And I'm also going to, um, there's a few things I got to do. So uh, I will probably not broadcast uh, Friday uh, so if you don't see a thumbnail come down the, the pike, uh, there'll probably be one that says for sure, no, uh, but right now it doesn't look like it's going to happen. We'll see how things develop during the week, but it's VA week for me. My, my dad is a veteran and we're trying, we're working to get him back under the umbrella of people who know him. He just got out of the hospital a few weeks ago and I want to get him back with the doctors that know him. Because when you have a doctor that doesn't know you, they kind of freak out and they get all weird and they say things that tick me off. So I want him back with the doctors. And I finally on Friday was able to talk to his uh, GP and she realized that all I wanted from her was to take her own tests and to make her own diagnoses because she knows my dad. And that way, you know, she doesn't talk to you. Uh, she doesn't talk down to you like, these other people have been doing and just making the uh, dragon come out, Rawr! you know? <laughs> so, yeah, so there you go. So let's see what you have to say. Uh, thank you for listening to me. Just kind of go across the gambit. Um, I did mention Mobius. I might talk about Morbius, not Mobius. Mobius is an artist. Morbius is the character. I like vampires. And uh, I watch a lot of vampire shows, but I'm getting kind of tired of the over sugary, saturated uh, teen vampire. Like I'm not a fan of Twilight. Sorry if you are. Uh, that's your business. But I'm not into those kind of vampires. I think the most romantic vampire I really enjoy is the Frank Langella's depiction of Dracula. For the first time, I read Dracula till the book fell apart when I was a kid. And... Um, um, so when Frank Langella came onto the scene, unlike Bella Lugosi, who I love very much, uh, he was a sexy vampire. And I said, Whoa, now I know why women open their windows to Dracula because that's a sexy character out there, maybe glamming her a little bit, but still very attractive vampire. So maybe the women just couldn't say no to Dracula, the vampire. Anyway, I loved the vamp. I love vampires. I just like them to be a little more, um, I guess if I was going to go with the more romantic side of vampires, and it's not all romantic, um, is uh, Anne Rice's. I have her original three books, and I love the Vampire Lestat and Interview with a Vampire. The movies were okay, but I have to say that uh, Kirsten Dunst's The Little Girl Vampire was brilliant. She was great, great, brilliant, and you won't hear me use her name and brilliant in the same sentence very often. Really, honestly, I'm not a fan of her later acting, but I loved her as this little girl. She was absolutely stunning and fantastic. But my point is when I saw the posters for Morbius, I was like, tell me about this doctor turned vampire. I'm not a DC comic book Marvelite person. So I was not understanding this character at all, but I wanted to see him because as my husband explained, he is a, um, a very sick individual and he becomes a doctor because he has a amazing brain. And as a doctor, he's looking for a cure for himself and his friend. Basically, that's the premise. I don't think I'm spoiling anything, but we waited and it only had one star. And I was like, oh, come on. One star? I mean, really? And then I watched it and no, it is not a one star movie. I actually liked it. Okay. I tend to like movies that people don't like. So I'm a big uh, Venom fan. I think Venom is just hilarious. I especially love when in the first one, Venom is, takes over the woman and it's a sexy Venom. I just think that, that that's just so weird and twisted. It just makes me laugh. And I love the way that Venom says, Eddie. So I just, I don't know. Okay. So if you're out there going, oh, I hated Venom or oh, I hated Morbius or whatever, whatever. Get the 
this is my taste. Okay. It's not making you, I'm not in any way influencing your taste, but I thought it was good. Okay. It was a great, no. Was it amazing? No. Was it cool? Yes. A lot of CG, but what else are you going to do? The vampire's got to change, shift, and fly. This is where CG really, really works. So I really enjoyed it. I especially love sequences with the bats, okay? When I saw Batman Begins, I think that was the first one with... Uh, uh, the first one where they used like a, they tapped into reality for Batman. I really enjoyed that one because he was amongst bats. I love bats. They're one of my favorite animal and I love when they swarm. So in this one, Morbius is standing in a tank with bats and they're swarming and it's such a cool visual. They could have, you know, I'd love that as a screensaver is him standing looking really kind of silhouette and creepy and scary. And then the bats are all going around him and I'm like, wow, I love that. So basically, it's a fun movie. It's seriously worth it. One thing about One Star is that, you know, you don't have to pay a lot for it. That's the good news. But I think that they were a little harsh when they gave it just one star. I think that they, that people who gave it one star. But you may have read the comic book and you may know the story. I do not. Okay, so let me tell you that I took it at face value, but I absolutely went, I really enjoyed it. So I just like it. It was different spin on things. And I really enjoyed it. I did not think that it was as bad as the latest Dr. Stra Dr. Strange with the, the witch, the Scarlet Witch. I thought that one was kind of, bleh. so I wasn't into that one. Okay. That's kind of a one star for me. Whereas Morbius was like, I would easily give it three stars, you know, like in the middle. Anyway, I know this is what the channel's about. Whatever crosses my mind on Terry TV is what I'm going to talk to you about. Yeah, that's kind of the way I, I roll. Anyway, it's Monday. Let's look at what you have to say. You don't have to listen to me jabber on anymore. <laughs> and we'll keep going. Hi. Hi, Diane. Good to see you. Michelle Dunell. Hi there. One and all. Terry, I sent you an email about Thursday and the ticket pickup. Good. Thank you. I hope so. Yes, that's another benefit. I won a Disneyland ticket for my fundraising with the help of Terry's tribe. So uh, I put the ticket up for grabs in Terry's tribe, the Disneyland ticket. Yeah. The caveat is you have to use it on the 27th. So um, Michelle was our uh, lucky recipient and uh, uh, you never know on that, in that tribe, you know, I'm not saying go there for the, for the, for the items because that's the wrong attitude. Go there because you want to be a part of something special and warm and fuzzy and wonderful. Hi, Joe Penny. Hey, sorry I missed you all last flyer, but my sleep cycle has been out of whack. I didn't wake up until we were done, but you got to watch it after, didn't you, Joe? We did miss you. I especially missed you. This public channel is not the same without you, Joe. So uh, I'm really glad that you're back. And um, yeah, things, I've been a lot tighter with my broadcast because I'm helping my dad. Uh, we're transitioning, getting him back into the fold of the VA so he can be taken care of by people, by uh, uh, health uh, care people that know him. It's just very, very important to me. Uh, and if you have elderly parents, um, one of the things you might hear is someone looks at you who doesn't know your dad and they go, well, you know, they are almost 90, which is a voice I absolutely hate when they're talking to you, like you're some kind of a nut, like maybe you didn't realize your dad was 90. My dad is a very energetic 90, and he's also a veteran. Now, if you're out there and you're a veteran, you are a different, you're a different cat, okay? You are really made of some bone and sinew and probably some of that, what's the Wolverine made out of? Titanium alloy. Because you guys have got spines of, you just, you're just amazing individuals as veterans. You are just my dad is a veteran, and when I look at my dad, his pain threshold is absolutely off the charts. When he says he's fine, he's a little uncomfortable. For most of us, we would be screaming, Bleh! you know, for the civilian, Bleh! it hurts, it hurts, it hurts. 
kids and he would be like, ow, you know, so I'm trying to make people understand that that's why my dad is so comfortable at the VA hospital, because they understand that veterans are a different constitutional makeup. And that means you got to talk with them differently. You have to understand that some of the things under normal hospital conditions that would freak everybody out is kind of normal for a veteran. So that's why when I talked to his primary doctor, she was like, oh, yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I get it which is so great to hear from someone instead of, you know that this happened and he's probably going to need surgery and blah, 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 blah. And, nee, nee, nee. and it's a panic doctor, which of course makes you get panicked. And you say, look, doc, you're just looking at him at face value. Why don't we just get him back with his VA doctor? Because the D VA doctor goes, uh-huh. Yeah. Check. Okay. Yeah. Check. All right. You know what? I'm seeing what you're saying now, Terry. It did take a couple days. I'm going to be honest. But finally, she saw what I was trying to say. And she said, bring him in. We're going to do our own analysis. So tomorrow I'm driving my dad down so that they can do their own analysis. And I'm so excited because I want him out of hospice. He's in the wrong place. And they are great if hospice is the right place for your family member. They're awesome. But, oh, my God, if they're in the wrong place, they are so bad for your parents' mindset because they talk to you like it's your last days on earth. And my father is just going nuts. He doesn't like the angelic, smarmy, sweet voices because for him, it's wrong. You follow me? I'm not saying hospice is wrong. I'm saying for my father. It's wrong. And as I see my father occasionally have doubt, which my dad never has doubt, I know that that little bit of poison is sneaking in and I've got to get it out. So my whole mission for the past three weeks is to get him out of hospice and to get the hospice people to speak to him like a human being. Why am I telling you this? Because if you have elderly parents and you find yourself in the same situation, you, yes, you have to be the bulldog for them. They, if they're from, if they are almost 90, if they're in their 80s, they are from a, they are from a generation that is very, very polite on the whole. Okay. They believe a doctor is authority. They don't interrupt. They don't question. And so you, as their child, must be that bulldog and question, why are you giving my dad this? Or why are you giving my mom this? Explain, please. And they'll be like, mm. you may have found that doctors like to zip, zip, they're here and then they're gone. But I will actually block the door if my mom or dad has questions. Doc, this appointment is my mom's. Doc, this appointment is my dad's. You sit right there and you answer every single question because you're not getting out of here until you do. That's the bulldog or Tasmanian devil that you have to encompass to protect your elderly parents. So this is why I may not be here Friday. I know it was the long version, but I really want you to understand that many of us are going through this right now. At 65, I'm going through this right now. And so it's very important that you take that baton and you become the fighter like my dad, who fought during the Korean War, did. Okay? So, you know, if you have someone from, you know, World War II, Korean War, Vietnam War, or simply, you know, Afghanistan, or no war, but they're enlisted you know this is a different constitution. I've heard this from veterans across the board. What makes you do it? And they say, it is in my DNA. That's what they say. And I love sitting in the VA and talking with all of them because hearing about their what they go through and what they've seen and what they haven't seen and how they're feeling is something that just is a story that cannot be, cannot be duplicated, which is one of the reasons I love the story of Desmond Doss. Desmond Doss. Uh, which is uh, Hacksaw Ridge. If you haven't seen that movie, you need to see that movie and then read the book.
because he's got a great book. And remember, movies are movies. Books are books. Book is truth. Movie is get you to put your butt in the seat and see the ticket, okay? So they choose the story they want to tell in a film. People get angry because it's not super accurate. That's called a documentary, guys. A movie director gets to cherry pick what he wants to tell, how he wants to encompass the story to create enough enthusiasm that what? You read the book. Basically, that's kind of, you. they want to get the movie sold, but then you want to read the book. If you're like, how much of this is true? William Wallace and Braveheart. How much is true? You love the movie. Now you start to research William Wallace, right? So maybe it's not all the same, but remember a movie is a movie. A book is a book. Truth is the truth. Your truth, my truth, the truth. Okay. Just remember that. Okay. All right. All righty. But we're glad you're here, Joe. Uh, I tagged your name in a couple of D23 posts for your award. Mwah, I love you. Yes. That's another bone to pick with me is that I should be a Disney legend. They're way overdue giving me my Disney legends award. And um, they're giving it to people who it's more of a bargaining chip than the actual award. And everyone is telling me that the award doesn't mean anything now, but all fairness and openly and honestly to you, I still deserve it and want it because I have designed attractions all over the world for this company. And I am really a good spokesperson for the brand. But more importantly, I fall, I fall into the criteria that Walt said was award worthy. And so I deserve that award, the Disney Legends Award from Disney. So thank you, Randy. That's so sweet of you. Really sweet. Hi, Emil. Don't mind. Don't mind. You will always be a legend. And I love you, you guys. In fact, the Disney and a fan club international just uh, declared me a Disney legend and the award is amazing. But more importantly, the people who showed up just popped my head off. So many of you showed up for that. And I got emotional because, you know, I was thinking, you know, two people in a cricket and uh, there were far more than that. It was just so precious to see you all there. And uh, the Disney and a fan club is going to do another event coming in October. And I'm going to be doing a pumpkin demo. And you will have the chance, if you go to the show and sale, to enter your pumpkin in a contest for something cool. I don't know what it is yet. They're going to tell me later. But uh, I will keep you posted on the pumpkin stuff, okay? What were your thoughts about the Legends this year? Don Han deserved it years ago. Like, I'm so glad he got it. I'm so glad he got it for the rest of it. Like Grey's Anatomy. I'm not getting, don't understand it. Don't care to understand it. I think it's dumb. Sorry. I think it's dumb. Blackish. Uh, why don't you give it to Fishburne? He is a legend, but the whole cast. No, sorry. I know what you're doing. You're trying to kiss, kiss, you know, show you're really good with people of color and it's as transparent as glass Disney. So frustrating for me. But uh, Fishburne deserves it. Yeah, absolutely. And then uh, Frozen cast. Frozen is an icon, right? And the Disney, Walt always gave it to voices and people who came together and made things like Frozen happen. So I'm not really upset with the people from Frozen. I mean, it fits. Animation, you know, voices, animators, things like that. Cool. But Blackish, no, um, except for Lawrence. And Grey's Anatomy, uh-uh. Okay. It just feels like a bargaining chip. Okay. It's become very, very political and commercial. And I'm sorry, because Walt well, wouldn't want that and neither do I. And, uh, but all politics aside and all commercial aside, I still deserve it. Terry Harden, T-E-R-R-I-H-A-R-D-I-N, Disney legend. Okay. Get with it, Disney. <laughs> if you don't ask, how are they going to know? How am I going to know if you don't tell me what your favorite things are, right? So there you go. There you go. Holly says, uh, Holly says, show me this comment. There you go. My treasure chest number was my dad's lucky number. Earlier, I asked if he was around. Could he send me a sign? And that moment you pulled my number. So what Holly is talking about is our amazing opportunity treasure chest where I open the treasure chest and give a lot of great things out to the tribe. I mean, why put them on eBay and sell them to strangers when I could give them to the tribe? 
So I dig them out and give them to the tribe. And if it's a big thing, I ask you to pay for shipping in the tribe. I say, hey, cut me a break and um, pay for shipping. So there's a guy in the tribe and I got this amazingly oversized, let me show you. I did a special opportunity for this giant Grogu. This is this goes to my tribe member Slappy. I love Slappy. Don't you love the name Slappy? Anyway, Slappy won this and he's going to get it because he comes to my pumpkin sculpting events. So I'm going to give it to him at the pumpkin sculpting event because he'd rather not pay for shipping and I'd rather not ship it. So, uh, but it's just a bobblehead. It does nothing but bobble, but it's the size of a flipping cookie jar. I was actually hoping it was a cookie jar, not a bobblehead of biblical proportions. But I did a special, uh, I did a special raffle for that, and uh, the hitchhiking ghost popcorn buckets. So, um, so all kinds of stuff happening, guys, on the tribe. And uh, if you want to do the basic tier, most of the people who've been speaking to you today are talking to you, have joined the basic tier or do the $10 tier. The point is, is that they're, they're lovely, lovely people and they're very, very generous. And it's not about, the dollar is about putting skin in the game, okay? Because I have to take my time and I want to be with you guys, but time is limited for me. So uh, it allows me to do this channel for free. It allows me to um, talk to them for as long as I want. And uh, I'm very grateful. So your $5, your $10 a month, whatever you, there are higher tiers, but right now I haven't filled those up as best I could. Uh, there's a, there's a super califragilistic tier. That's great too. But my point is for $5 a month, you're in, you, you, you get some good stuff. And, and as I go higher, I'm going to give you better, better perks. That's the idea of Patreon. But uh, right now I'm so slammed with family stuff and other stuff that this is why I recommend the base one. And then you can see if you, you know, swim in these waters and if you like it, great. Uh, most people who have done the $10 a month do it because they're like, you know, you're charging too little Terry. That's all. But it's about just, you have got, you know, if I'm going to put skin in the game with my time, you got to put skin in the game with $5 a month. You follow? It's only fair, right? And then on top of it, you send things for the, for the, for the opportunity drawing, which is just so, so fantastic. Yeah. So I'm grateful. Um, and Holly, what a great story. Okay. So she says, uh, being the messenger and that happens quite a bit. I tell people use their powers or draw on somebody. Um, Ron Kubala who is another um, tribe member. He's a, is an amazing painter. And uh, he came forward and uh, for the first time and actually uh, his number was pulled too. So it just, it's, it's, it's really something. Yeah. It's really something. Michael says, I think they need an ABC legends and a Disney legend, not to mix, not the mix of people from TV that haven't done much for Disneyland brand. Yeah. I mean, Disney Plus is full of some cool uh, legendary people who are doing some cool, fascinating things. And it's and Disney Plus is not full of people like me, but they, you know, they are, you know, it would have been great to make me a legend this year because of Disneyland Paris. But, you know, I digress. Okay. The chess pieces are magnificent. Thank you, Diane. And that's why I wanted just this corner of a table at D23 now that they've taken my booth or never given me that booth at D23 so that I could just show the chess set and collect the data. But if you're watching and you want to have your finger on the pulse of this chess set, then just messenger me, guys, or email me, uh, terry at terryharden.com, T-E-R-R-I, at terryharden.com, H-A-R-D-I-N, and say, I want to keep in touch and I'll put you on that list. Send me, you know, email me and I'll put your email on that list. No obligation. It just lets you know, A, when it's done, 
B, when the price and pre-sale begins, and C, what those tiers are. There will be three. So no obligation and talk to people who bought my Hitchhiking Ghosts. There was no pressure whatsoever because I have no doubt those who want this will get this, okay? And those who don't, won't, all right? I had a young lady say to me that full chess set makes me have to decide between it and a swimming pool in my backyard, all right? And I said to her, if you have to make that kind of decision, get the pool, okay? Get the swimming pool. Seriously, it's not about grabbing you, twisting your arms and making you purchase something that is not something that is, you know, for whatever reason, if you have doubts, don't buy it. But I'm seriously thinking I'm only going to do five sets. And I've got three people who I have tentatively said, do the math, 34 figures at 400 bucks a piece. And I haven't even put the chessboard in there. You got an idea of about what it's going to cost. Now that is not the price, but you can get an idea of what I'm talking about. And I already have three people who are saying I want it. Okay. And I'm thinking of maybe only doing five. All right. I will go 10 if enough people want it, but that's probably as high as I'm going to go. And this isn't a magnificent set. If you have the area to put this card table size thing in and you have the, you can set it out. Or if you're a chess player, you, you actually made, they're made so you can play with them. Okay. But understand Roly, it's his last collaboration with me and it's a gorgeous museum of the weird never done in three dimensions like this. Okay. It was done kind of loosely in the Haunted Mansion, but those pieces were kind of slapdash. If you look at them closely, they were kind of me, you know, but they're for a ride. You're going past the ride. It, it, it's different criteria. Okay. But these you're going to be staring at, you're going to be holding, you're going to be touching and moving them in your hands. And uh, we're going to, and that's the situation. I'm working very hard for the book to get some pictures of Roly, but we don't know if that's going to happen. Um, he's a very busy man and there's other things that enter in. So if not, I've got to do the best I can with what I have, right? But I'm not giving up. So uh, I hope if that's what you want, that you reach out to me and let me know. Okay. Joe says, Michael Roman, some of them, I wonder about Anthony Anderson, nice guy, good actor, no problem with him, but how is he Disney? Check. Um, just being on ABC as part of a Disney owned company doesn't really make a person a Disney legend. Never it does. Never it does. So Joe, you're right. They're starting to dilute the meaning of the honor. It's been diluted. Okay. It's a bargaining chip. It's like, if I give you a Disney Legend Award, will you come work for us? And that's really tacky. That is not what Disney wanted. Well, it wanted. Um, pretty soon, we'll probably see somebody who did a 30-second cameo on a 20th century movie being named Disney Legend. It's getting ridiculous. Yeah, you know, when the Kardashians finally get one, I'm done. I'm absolutely done because that would be, oh, we want in with the Kardashians because they've got money. You know, it's just, ugh, it's painful, Joe. Uh, my tummy. It hurts my tummy. Yeah. It hurts my little tummy. It breaks my heart too. Yeah. I mean, I'm honest. I'm being honest. Um, you might be able to make a quality flyer as an advertising the piece just to make people aware of this magnificent piece of art and really connection. His backstory is important. Yes. In fact, Joshua is uh, said to me that I do a postcard that I can hand out to you guys that has a QR code and you can hit the QR code and it takes you to a landing page where you can po put in your email. That way you can do it at D23. You can do it later. You can just tuck that in there and go, oh yes, Roly Crumb chess set wanted to be a part of it. Even if you just want to follow the story, you're welcome to do that. But I'm really looking to find out how many people would want the big set five or 10 limited. You see what I'm saying? Do I do 10 limited full sets? Five limited full sets. I'm leaning towards five. So that's why D23 would be very helpful because I know there's people who have the money to spend on something like this if they want it. And that's the key. Do you want it? If you don't, I'll do five. If you do, I'll do 10. If you really want it, I'll do 10. <laughs> So that's my feeling. Okay. Yeah. Because we've got to, we're going to do everything by hand. 
Nothing is manufactured except for the chessboard. And um, yeah, everything by hand we're doing. So yeah, yeah. I, I really wanted to lay the chessboard out and show the pieces on the board so you could get an idea of how beautifully they work together. But if I don't have a table, I'm not taking the board. Okay, I'm just going to take a couple of the chess pieces so you guys can hold them and see how beautiful they are. Yeah, they really are great. And thank you for that. Um, and thank you for that suggestion, Bob Berdeen. Um, Patty Fox, hello, happy Monday. And everyone, yes, have a fantastic week. And remember that there's a very, very good chance I won't be broadcasting on Friday because my chalk event is Saturday and I've got to get ready for it. So I'll keep you posted. Just watch to hit that little bell. So if that bell doesn't ring for you, you know, I'm not, I'm not doing one Friday. Okay. Subscribe and hit the bell. All right. Helps us all out. Um, and, uh, uh, lets me know that you like what you're hearing. Okay. I'm sorry you missed it too. No, not this time, Bob, but some of the new people did, you know, beautiful Naomi, she won something and Matt won something. Our poet, he won something. Um, it, it was neat. It was Bella won something today. That was really exciting. Little Bella won something. So, um, you know, and the tribe is really great with this. It, it, you don't have to be present to win, um, to, to get something from, you know, the, uh, opportunity barrel. Uh, each one is assigned a number. And if I pull that number, that's what you get. But, um, Bella, uh, has been very busy with her own stuff. She's 11 and, uh, we, she got something. And when you're not there, what happens is we draw all the numbers and then we save for prizes at the end, for gifts at the end. And then you get the tribe chooses what goes to whom. And they're so good at it. They're so good at it. And a lot of people who were new were just surprised that I wasn't saying, okay, this for him, this for him, this for him. No, I let them do it. I let you do it. You, you, you're, you have a, you're part of a new world. Um, and uh, I'm grateful. So uh, it's a great place. I hope you'll go to and join us. Uh, so sorry you missed it, Joe. I missed it too. Yes, I'm sorry you you, you know you all missed it. Yep. Uh, two people knocked on my door this morning and introduced themselves as Terry's witnesses, and I wanted to tell them about joining Terry's tribe and how it would change. <laughs> how that would change my life. You're so cute. Ah, that's precious. Thank you. Darren says you're always a winner, Bob. That's true, Bob. Darren said it first. See, Darren's a tribe member. Can you tell? Yes. Yes, you can tell. Uh, Francisca says, I was so disappointed last D23 Expo that I'll not attend this year. I think you're pretty smart. I'm really, if I didn't need to collect this data, didn't want so badly to collect this data, I wouldn't be going. And also uh, Josiah, who's also a tribe person, gave me, uh, we traded for tickets so uh, he's so sweet. He's such a, everybody is so good there. Uh, Disney only wants you to use their app and my phone is not for me to be glued to it. I know, I know. It's going to be a challenge for me too because their Wi-Fi sucks. So you're supposed to use the app and there's going to be thousands of people and their Wi-Fi sucks. How brilliant is this? Not, <laughs> Francisca, you're so right. Now I'm upset. They're filming Quantum Leap at my apartment complex. I had a job offer Friday and I had to turn it down. Turns out it was this job. <laughs> oh, Evan. Uh, talk about not having to commute. At least I can watch from my window. I'm sorry. Evan is a, a production assistant and sometimes a personal assistant. And he works a lot of these things. And um uh, Oh, that's too bad. You could have even taken a break in your, your own apartment and had lunch in your own apartment. Bummer, dude. I feel your pain. And even Diane says, LOL, that's for you. Joe says, Connie Lane is in my ears. And I, <laughs> I hope she hears that because that's adorable. Uh, I was talking to Sharon last night, says Bob. And as you say, she's such a pleasant person. Rose and I are still working on it because she can still raise money. And also I still have to pay you for the money for the opportunity drawing. I know it's funny. You dropped me off the ones from your, the ones that you raised and you forgot your 20 bucks. I mean, but that's, you're coming to see me, I think on the 27th. So you can just flip me a 20 then. Um, I went ahead and, and put in, um, 
any monies that I got for the opportunity drawing, I went ahead and put in um, because, you know, chalk's not real good with a lot of checks and a lot of different things like that. So I just go ahead and put it in myself and then put the money, uh, put the money in my account. And then, you know, but you can see if you go to chalk that I try to um, like in the case of you, Bob, you, you and Rose raised this money. And so in my explanation, I said from Bob and Rose Boudin, which Sharon can see. So that really touched her heart too. And I always tell her if she needs help to let me know, because I, it doesn't all have to go under me. You know, I'm not going to win best, the highest uh, fundraiser because uh, there's a girl named Jacqueline on her team who's just kicked all our butts four times over. I mean, there's no catch in her. So, you know, it's not because I want to be the biggest earner. It's just that right now, Sharon's very adamant about, you know, you're part of my tribe. So that's where the money should go. And I'm grateful to her for that. You know, it makes it easy for me to make sure the money gets in under the deadline. Right. So that's the idea. Hi, Joshua. Good to see you. Thank you for saying hello to me. Randy Gribe says, I travel a lot also and post pics in the tribe. That's true. Randy is kind of our tour guide. As is Michael Roman and his mom. They went to um, Monument Valley and I've never been, but I've always wanted to go. And their pictures of Monument Valley were so gorgeous. I was like, when can we go, honey? When can we go? And then um, one of the tribe members uh, Robert Anderson owns a sushi restaurant and I love sushi. It's like my favorite food. I love fish. Fish are not safe. I just love fish to death. Um, yum, yum, yum. Anyway, he has a sushi restaurant. And in fact, he has several. And so I keep saying there's only one thing better than eating sushi at a sushi restaurant. And that's eating it at a sushi restaurant. That's a friend of yours. So I keep telling him we're going to set that up as soon as I get a breather which is going to be when? Yeah, I know. <laughs> Watch it. <laughs> Hello, Crumpet Puppet Troop. Happy Monday. I'm hanging in there. It's getting better. It is getting better. I actually got to do a tiny bit of art. Um, not much. Uh, and that's what's kind of making me tilt is not being able to do a tiny bit of art. But you know how God sends you a sign? So as I venture into my own art uh, joys, I want to do my own art style, not just Disney. I've been doing Disney for a long, long time now, and it's time to do Terry art. And I'm really excited about doing um, some paintings and some sculpting and some one-of-a-kinds that are just me. But you can't just say, hey, I'm now doing this. You just got to build the audience up, don't you? And um, I found this end table that's jet black and someone was throwing it away. Actually, my neighbor was throwing it away or leaving it out for someone to grab. And I grabbed it because it is jet black. It is super, super simple design and it just screams to be painted. So I am so excited to paint it. My um, people in my company who paint were giving me advice on how to paint it. Is this going to happen immediately? Uh, no, but uh, I'm thinking about what I want to put on it. What do I want to do? Do I want to do castles and dragons, which is my go-to? Do I want to do something that is branded or trademarked? No. Um, I'm thinking I'm going to do something. I'm kind of leaning towards Noah's Ark where I can do all the animals all over it and um, do all kinds of cool animals all over it. Or maybe I'll do tigers or maybe I'll do dragons. Um, it's still, the jury's still out because I'm just so excited to be able to paint it that I keep looking at it and going, what's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? It's such a beautiful palette, but it will be a great example for me to put up in my gallery, the gallery that wants to put my work up there. Um, it'll be a great spot for me to show off in the gallery my, um, my ability to do one of a kind special art. And uh, I also do, you know, like I was in the process of doing a huge man cave for uh, a guy back East when the pandemic hit and he had to cancel, but we were in process of making it look like the dragon's lair man cave. So there's all kinds of cool things and opportunities. So kind of a long thing for how are you crumpet uh, 
the crumpet puppet troupe. But yeah, getting better every day. Lugosi also was considered very a very sexy Dracula back when he was on stage in 1931. Uh, in the 1931 film, it was more subdued sexiness, though. No, I, I thought he was. He was my favorite until he was my favorite. He still is my favorite. OK, don't get me wrong. I love Bela Lugosi. Um, but Frank Langella helped me really see why women open their doors. Okay. Um, it just, it just was super clear. <laughs> All of us were like, okay, get it. You know, <laughs> guess what? The Saturday before last, I went to my first puppet festival. You did. Did you love it? Oh, it's so exciting. That's so great. It's wonderful, isn't it? Because there's so many different kind of puppets, not just what we see on television. Yeah. And you, you can see a killer shadow puppets. People on the tribe were asking, what is a shadow puppet? And I was going to actually make some shadow puppets and put that on the $25 tier level where you can make shadow puppets and then how to do a screen and how to do your own shadow puppet show. Cause I love shadow puppets. I did them for a show years ago when I was younger, I worked in all kinds. I'm a marionetteer as well and do all kinds of stuff like that. So, but congratulations that keep it up, keep it up. Uh, I liked Venom too. Yes. I like, I just thought that was, I just love that movie. I just, and I could, I go around going Venom, Venom, Venom. Venom, venom, venom. Yeah, I like it. I really, I got to tell you, I love the sexy venom when he takes over his, the girl that he loves and she's a sexy venom. That just, that was like, whoa, you know, that really, I don't know. I just thought that was a cool, that was a cool venom. And then I love the way he works, you know, with his character and, and uh, there's just some great stuff in there between him and his symbiote. Um, maybe I'm just one of those people that likes the odd stuff, you know? But uh, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. Really, really loved it. Paul says, good morning. I'm going to play devil's advocate for the Legends selection. I understand that people see Legends from other parts of the company. But even if they weren't always part of Disney, they're part of Disney now. And they should be acknowledged. My issue with Legends is that they tend to select Legends more for their star power than for what they've accomplished. Exactly, Paul. Bargaining chip. If I give, I'd like to trade this Legends Award for a hamburger today. Uh, it, it just, that's what it feels like to me. It feels like if I give you this Legends Award, you'll come and work for us more. And that's not what the Legend Award is for. And uh, I really liked it when it was about things that they, that they contributed to Disney animation or to Disney, um, Disney parks or to the Disney brand. And not everyone seems to be doing that, that it gets a legend. It's just like, ooh, let's give it to a celebrity star. So what do I have to do? Become a celebrity star first and then get my Legends Award that I deserved, whether I'm a star or not, is the thing, Paul. So I get what you're saying, but I don't think that you should just give it to people because they're stars. Makes me want to barf. Um, honestly, and, uh, just, just, just no, just no. I just, you know, I used to think that I wasn't worthy for the, I think I've said this before. And then Andreas Deja says, what are you talking about? You've designed in this park, this park, this part, this part. You've been, you, you've been a real, you've been the Disney brand in your kindness and your heart. And that's what it's about. And Andreas Deja is a Disney legend. And all of a sudden I said, you're right. What am I saying? How dare I tell myself I'm not worthy? I am worthy, more worthy than most of these people who are getting it this time. Just saying, just saying. Um, join us in the tribe uh, for, <laughs> join us in the tribe uh, to brighten our day. So uh, yeah, she's right. She's right. A bobblehead of biblical proportions or a bibblehead of bobblehead Joe does these all the time. Did you guys miss him? Those of you who come regularly, did you miss him? I did. Jenny, gosh, girl, we haven't seen you in a while. That's because you're so busy, Miss Artist Extraordinaire. I have to tell you that uh, uh, I had a couple of people on Friday write to me and say that their, their children were inspired enough by a talk that I gave that they went off to pursue art, and now they are really killing it. 
And this is the thing that makes me really happy. Jannie is also one of these people. Um, Jannie is an artist, a very talented artist. And I went to Canada before the pandemic to speak to artists about doing what they love and how they can make it happen. And um, Jannie wasn't so sure, but we did a little exercise together, didn't we, Jannie? And all of a sudden she came to my workshop. I do a retreat. I might start them again next year in 2023 only 10 people are allowed to attend and those 10 people get my personal attention for three days we break bread together we we eat food we uh do fun stuff we work 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 on what you want to do and i give you some tips on how to do it i have a couple of cool speakers come in we play a bit it's really great last time we did it at a cabin and it was a wonderful cabin um and then before that, we had a little bit of a scare, but we managed to get that to work too. So, uh, but it's it's invitation only. You 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 apply, and then if you get, and then if you can come, um, we have a great time, and we do it over a weekend, and uh, it's a lot of fun. But Jenny came, and when she went home, her husband said she was vibrating. She was actually glowing with inner light, vibrating, and then just like a superhero, boom. She exploded in her career, hence has exploded. She is just one of the greatest painters and she's really starting to make her mark in the world. So I'm so proud of you that uh, I'm just busting. Are you going to sell any copies of separate chess pieces? I'm doing the six. So you can get a box which represents each chess piece, the pawn, the rook, the bishop, the knight, the king, and the queen, six of them. Uh, still a bit of an investment, but that's the farthest that Rolly would go. He would not, he was not real cool about individual ones. And so I wasn't going to push it. And to be honest, I'm not going to put this all on Rolly. I wasn't cool about that either. It's a very unique and special set. And if you are fortunate enough to own it, it is going to be magical. It is something that will draw attention and it's something that will never, there's a very good chance will never be done again, at least to this level. Let me say that it will never be done again at this level. So like my hitchhiking ghosts, which were phenomenal. And I don't know if you noticed, several collectors noticed that Disney saw my art and all of a sudden ghosts are everywhere. Hatbox ghosts, ghosts, even a ghost that was named incorrectly. Um, but they really pull it, pulled it out. And this is one of the reasons that they let me do what I do because I spark something. You guys love it. You buy it. And Disney goes, Hey, we should release more of this. Not that if they took two seconds to find out how many of you people love the Haunted Mansion and the ghost, they could have figured it out. But a lot of their stuff is shoddy. And this is quality work that I do, really high quality work because I don't release anything that's not cool and, and of, of great quality. So to answer your question, no individual singles, but there will be the book where you'll get to see the whole journey. Um, as crazy as it is, you'll get to see. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it's a great question, Jannie, but I'll keep you posted, sweetie, um, on it. You got to have the real estate though, because these pieces, as you've seen in earlier in this broadcast are so large that you need a card table to display the chess set. I mean, I'm still trying to figure out how I'm going to box the pieces. I may just make it a pizza box <laughs> thicker, but you know what I mean? Just do a square box, the size of the board, board fits in, chess pieces fit over it or chess pieces fit under it. The board fits on top and it's this cool giant pizza box. And then how in the hay am I going to ship it? I don't know, but that's kind of what's percolating in my mind right now. Um, but yeah, every little thing, there's so many components that go to this and the key is to get them sculpted first, please, Lord, let me get one more. <laughs> oh, goodness, goodness. I'm a winner because I, I'm a winner because of friends like you. You're a winner because you are who you are, Bob, and your family is your family. But I appreciate that. So sorry, Evans. <laughs> Diane, he'll remember next time, Diane. He'll remember to ask. Everything is a lesson, isn't it? Yeah. 
you didn't ask this time, but you're smart enough that you will ask next time, won't you? Of course you will. Oh, that tea feels so good. So grateful. Uh, good morning. Started watching you earlier. Thank you, Joseph. Then got a phone call and missed a lot. Hope you find a way to make an appearance in D23. If you said it, I missed it. Uh, I am going to be there, but I'm just not, I'm not excited. I'm excited about Sunday because Connie's going to be there. Connie Lane's going to be there. And the tribe is going to gather. I always get excited when the, I get to see the tribe face to face. But Friday, I'm like, oh, do I really want to go two days to something that I think is going to be not so good? You know what I mean? I'm getting whiny. I'm just becoming a baby. Yeah, I'm going to go. But I mean, it's just I got to get I got to get my revved up and excited. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, Miss June. I'll tell you one thing I am excited about. Oscar Martinez is going to be the next Disney and a fan club international legend. And let's talk about Paul. Why isn't Oscar a Disney legend yet from Disney? See, he and I deserve to be that. Okay. If Oscar was on that list, I'd be like, yeah, you see June. Um, because Oscar is iconic with Disney, Disneyland, and yet, come on, you know? I mean, really, come on. So he deserves it. I deserve it. We deserve it, okay? Uh, we just do. We just do. And uh, I'm so glad that you, Paul, and the Disney and Fiend Club get it. So, uh June, I want to tell you that I restructured my entire schedule. October is crazy for me as a pumpkin sculptor, but I worked it out so I could have that day so I can be there that night when he gets his award and see you and his family. And uh, I'm so honored to be a part of it. So I cannot wait. Hopefully they'll let me be auctioneer again because I love that. Uh, but more importantly, uh, just so excited to see uh to see you all there to celebrate his award. Yeah. Um, it is so disappointing that Terry hasn't been made a Disney legend. Yeah, it gets under my skin. I'm not going to lie. Makes me. <laughs> 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 Do dragons. Oh, you think so? Yes. Well, you know how I feel about dragons. It's not a hard, it's not a big reach being the mother of dragons. Uh, and, and I'll, I'll probably talk to you about design layout too, Jenny, cause you've done doors and you've done trash cans and you've done sides of buses and all kinds of cool stuff. Um, so it might be nice to talk to you about space management and not getting too busy. Uh, speaking of too busy, I saw a few of the new Halloween things that Disney's put out and my God, they're just so busy. They're either not busy, like everything's on the front and the back has nothing or they're so busy, my stomach hurts. I just can't get over. The Crocs aren't so bad, but they're busy. But that shirt that's like 70 bucks or whatever. Oh, my Lord. With all the candy and everything. Oh, my gosh. I get, oh, no, 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 no. Um, No. Yeah. There's a few products I think are kind of cute. That ghostly stitch and the little jacket. The Haunted Mansion jacket is pretty cute. Uh, I got the idea that it's ghostly stitch, so I guess it's cute. Not going to be buying it, but there's a lot of Halloween stuff that I'm like, yeah, pass, uh, unfortunately. But what do you think? Did you like it? Maybe I'm just being too harsh. Uh, Terry is in good company. Margaret Carey, Tinkerbell has not made Digital Legend. There are many that have been overlooked. Yes, I got a great group with me of the non-Disney legends who should be Disney legends. Attention, Disney, get on it, group. <laughs> Bob Bredeen, so true. I don't understand the process at all anymore. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Margaret Carey isn't a Disney legend yet, but Anthony Anderson is. It's a worthless thing then. Yeah. Yeah, but as Paul said, you know, Paul, some of the, you know, what Paul says is is good. I don't want to make Paul feel like he can't voice his opinion. Please do, Paul, because uh, I appreciate it. I really do. 
Bobberine, perhaps they should change the name of the award to Disney Legends Legacy Award for people that contributed and carried on the Walt Disney Vision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But right now, they're just looking for a bargaining chip. And this one is a big one. You get to walk across the stage, accept this beautiful trophy, and walk off. And even if you don't even know what it's for, you go, you know, ow, right? Ow. Uh, Mind-blowing retreat changed everything. Yeah, Jenny was fantastic. I was so excited to see her just, you know, um, everybody, uh, I was in an event where they asked you what your superpower is. Mine is to light wet gunpowder. You know how you cannot ignite wet gunpowder because water makes it unignitable? Well, I can do that for you. That's why the, the, the event is so good because I like wet gun powder. If you are striking it and it's not happening, that's where I come in. And believe me, I've done it for quite a few and I'm very grateful that, uh, it's been so successful. Good morning, Melissa Eiler. Good to see you. Hi, Terry. If you ever get a chance to stop by my profile, I have a photo album of Western art that I like by various artists you might appreciate. Joe, that sounds like a good idea. I like Western art. Yeah, in fact, I really wanted to do some Western sculpting because I like horses. That was the other idea was maybe to take this end table and just make it like stampeding horses, you know? <sighs> There's a million and one ideas, aren't there? Joe, a million and one ideas. It's with your art brain. You just can't shut it off, you know? Hi! Hi, uh, hi, Diane Gold Disney. Diane Gold Disney. Going to teach pumpkin in your style this year. Super stoked. Ah, you've got to take pictures and photos, all right? Let me see what your group does, okay? Please. Oh, I'm so excited. It's going to Canada. You know, they said I should certify people so that they have to pay me a little something for teaching this technique. No, 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 no. Just send me the picture so I can put it on my website and go, look, we're in Canada now. That's what I like. I mean, you know. Some guy was like, I'm going to charge a hundred dollars and I don't even charge a hundred dollars, you know, but you know, <laughs> hello again. June says, oh my goodness. We love you for that, Terry. Uh, I'll let Oscar know right now. He will get emotional for that. Thank you for taking time out of your schedule. For <laughs> It's a no brainer, June. This is a no brainer. This is like, you're working too hard to look for people that have nothing to do with the Disney brand. When people like Oscar and myself are right there in front of you. I mean, I don't know how you and Oscar feel, but didn't you feel for the longest time that you're standing right here and they're like, Hmm, who should we pick? Who should we, could you, could you stand outside? Who should we, I mean, there's gotta be a legend here, right? Move, you know, you know, you know, <laughs> Ow! You know, that's all I have to say. Ow! <laughs> that Disney, Disney Hollywood shirt made me dizzy. Me too! I looked at it and I thought, how can anyone find this? Somebody might. And if you do, good for you. Uh, but in the sunlight, I, I'm going to have to make sure I'm near someplace I can sit down because I agree with Michelle. It makes you dizzy. And it's costly to have worked that hard on that shirt. Uh, Bob Berdine says, Oscar truly does deserve the Disney Legends Award. His devotion to Disneyland is unsurpassed. I agree with you, Terry. He started with in the beginning. No, no, no. More than that. Okay. Oscar was there. <laughs> like from the beginning. Do you not get this? <laughs> I can't get over how they must be a Nike organization or from Fox or something. And they just don't know how Disney rolls. And they're coming in with their agenda instead of finding out what is the Disney agenda. And that's the thing that just makes me want to spit. Yeah, we'll go with spit. Um, brr, yeah, yeah. Uh, so need to teach with you again. Yes, I know. We got to make it happen, right? I got to do a, um, uh, I got to do a, um, um, a Canada trip with you and Ivano. And we need to do like an art walk or, you know, when you have an art walk, you have an art show where we're not only showing our art and what we're selling, but having people come together and doing some of our, our fun techniques and stuff. I think it would really be great to have just this place where people could jump in and do something fun and cool, or it's a day set aside for learning because as artists, that's what we love to do is learn new. I mean, I'm really getting into painting. I'm, I, I can't find my style yet. It's not there, but I just keep going, Janny, and it'll come. 
but I'm so excited because I try this thing and I try that thing and I go, that feels good, but that's not all me. You know, that's a little of, you know, of my teacher, <laughs> like 10 hundred, I'm doing this really nice painting and it's my painting. It's my characters, but it has that kind of 10 hundred look, you know, cause he's my teacher. So I'm like, this is cool, but I'd like to push it a little bit more. <laughs> it's really a fun journey. It really is a fun journey. I went outside to hang with my friend working on the show. I've already been mistaken for a PA twice. Do I just give off assistant vibes? <laughs> I guess so, Evan. It must be that hungry look. And your tongue should actually stay in your mouth when you're out in public. Okay. So, uh, but yeah, I think you have that. I want to work. Look, <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm teasing you. You know that, right? You're a cutie pie, but I mean, yeah, no, just, just food for that. Joe says folks like you who haven't been named Disney legends and should, should be known as the, the chopped live <laughs> chopped liver brigade. <laughs> what am I? Chopped liver. Ah, thank you, Joe. Yes, I do know what you're saying. So many guests always tell him when he visits the park because it's true, Jude. And I hope Oscar realizes this as I do. They're not just blowing smoke. They're really from their heart saying, if we had a say in it, you'd be a legend or you are a legend already in our heads. But if we could, we could vote on it, we definitely, you'd be there. You'd be there. You know, and I think it would be great to let some of the the, the fans um, and Disney enthusiasts vote, you know, or at least have an advisory committee so you can kind of understand why yes and why no, you know? Yeah, yeah, my feeling. We could use the gallery and yeah, yeah, I'd love it. We, we got to talk about that. We should have a Zoom call with you, Ivano, and me at some point and, and kind of plan that for next year so that they have running room. You know, I want everybody to have running room so that they don't have a, like, not tomorrow. I'm doing everything. <laughs> Your style is always yours. It's coming. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. I mean, I look at stuff like you, I look at what Ivana does. My sculpture is mine. You can't mistake it. So, but it didn't happen overnight, you know, but the exploration, I have to tell you, those of you who are nervous about starting something, and I'm not saying that you are, but if you're nervous about starting something, guys, jump in. Because even if you make mistakes and it looks, you know, the thing that I've learned about acrylics that I just love is if I really hate it and I haven't hated anything yet, but if you really hate it, you just paint over it and you do it again. And I was like, oh yeah, you know, <laughs> it was great. So I did this Bugs Bunny one for Red Dot and I was painting it and painting it and painting it. And I had this, I wanted it to really look like Bugs Bunny and I wanted it to be kind of a little bit moody and interesting and cool. And, um, and, uh, uh, I, I, I finished it, I thought, and then I couldn't say there was something wrong with it. And I was like, what is off? You know, something's off before I submit it to the Chuck Jones society. And I was like, what's wrong with it? And I had my husband come in. There were two things wrong with it. And this is the thing. When you let somebody come and look at your painting, that really has absolutely nothing to do with painting or just gives their first impression because you've been staring at it so long. And I'm sure Janny will pipe in and agree on this. They walk in and they go, well, first of all, Bugs has whiskers. There's no whiskers in that painting. Oh, my God. <laughs> and he's blue. And I was like, oh, my God, I forgot to make the front part of his face white. I just couldn't see it anymore. And so I sat down and I just painted over the gray, the little bit of blue gray for his other fur or in his face white and bam, there it was. And then the whiskers, you would be surprised how wonderful whiskers make the face just come into focus when you're a bunny. You know, it was just wonderful. And Chuck Jones liked it so much. They put a $2,500 buy it now price tag on it. It didn't go for that, but they put it on. And that was that from being something that they thought, you know, 75 bucks, <laughs> which was last year. I jumped way high. Uh, I'm just touched by it. I'm so touched by it. It actually sold for about 400, I think maybe 450, but in that range. And that was higher than the 150 it did the year before. 
So it's there, it's happening, it's coming. And um, I'm excited. You also have to understand that when you're doing something like this Bugs Bunny for Chuck Jones, which you're doing the Warner Brothers characters, and I'm kind of doing them in a style that's different from what I'm used to, that people like when the characters are reenacting old masters. Like two of the paintings that did really well was the rabbit who did the girl with the pearl earring and the duck did the same, Daffy and Bugs as those characters. And so, you know, then one is this blue boy or pinky. I, I'm just not really into that, but I could probably find something that would be really cool. So I'll have to think about it for next year. What is it? And then there was a theme that I chose not to do, but a lot of the theme ones did well too. So uh, a lot of Abbey Road, a couple of people did Abbey Road once those sold really well. So it's just a matter of uh, if I wanted to, win a red dot. If that was my only feeling, I would do more of the cartoony version, but I'm exploring my inner artist as a painter. And so I'm kind of doing a Terry Harden, how she would paint bugs or Daffy or whatever. So that's kind of what I'm into, um, really. And um, I don't regret it. I'm really grateful that they thought it was worth, you know, one day we'll hit, one day we'll together hit and it will be cool. Paul says, we're very happy Oscar accepted. He was such an important part of Disneyland, the Disneyland experience. He deserves this. Yeah, from your lips to God's ears, Paul. Absolutely. As far as the Disney Legends thing, Bob C. put me on the Legends Committee for a fan's perspective. Oh, so it's your fault. <laughs> Paul. <laughs> We know the truth, Terry. You are a Disney legend. I love you, Michelle. Thank you. Paul! <laughs> uh, are you your style? Uh, your style is always there. Yeah. Um, I can see it. It's creeping. It's trying. I'll have to show you, Jenny, some of the, the ones that are all started. You know, um, the one that's over here. I don't know if you can see it. It's not done yet. This one right here which is Asian. It's like an Asian flair because I'm really into Asian art. But uh, it was enough to uh, get them to ask me if I do Asian themed art for uh, Asian museum. So that's kind of exciting. So they're liking what I'm doing. It's just a matter of honing it in. So you go, that's a Terry Arden, you know, and that takes time, as you know, because you are a painter extraordinaire and there's no mistake in a Janny. That's for sure. I noticed that a friend is watching. He just featured, he, uh, he was just, he just got featured at club 33. He has also paid his dues. I am happy for his success. A real good man. Yes. Awesome. Um, have a great weekend, everyone. Your dad and you, Terry, uh, in my prayers. Yes. Did you know we were winding down? You are so smart because we are. Hi, guys. Remember that this Friday I may not be broadcasting. I'll keep you posted. Terry TV, ask me anything. May have to wait a week because uh, lots of things are happening with chalk. And also, uh, if I can get an appointment for my father, I'm going to make it happen with the VA. There's several things that need to happen for my dad with the VA. So this is uh, get my dad out of hospice week. I don't know if it'll happen, but we're, I'm really on the mission for it. And uh, I really love talking to someone in the VA who understands that v, you know, veterans are different. Veterans are not really someone who wants to, older veterans, let me say that, younger veterans, I shouldn't speak for you, but uh, they don't like video calls. And she said, the, the scheduler said, oh yeah, just forget about video calls as far as veterans are concerned. They want to see you face to face. They want to see your eyes and see, see and feel the aura around you that is speaking to them. They're very, very, very uh, adamant about this and is my dad. So, uh, so it's cool. It's absolutely cool. So let's follow this. Have a great week. Have a good time. Thank you, Diane, for saying what you're saying. Do something nice for someone else. It'll make you feel a whole lot better. So if you're feeling down in the dumps, if you're feeling sad, act as if. Do something nice. It can be as simple as if you see one person in line and the line, uh, one person at the checkout counter, okay? 
I have a particular co toasted coconut rum I love. And uh, we went to get a couple bottles and the line was huge. One dude at BevMo. One dude. So we made him laugh. We made we gave him a giggle because he, there he was working as hard as he could as the line kept getting longer and longer. And you know, he was exhausted. There were tons more employees in there. And I don't know what their criteria was for being behind the register, but he just kept plugging along. And that is a nice thing to make him laugh, to make him know you notice, to make him know you realize he's doing the best he can or she's doing the best she can. Um, you're in a Starbucks. If that's your thing, uh, buy the guy behind you a coffee. Uh, that's easy. Or simply just a kind word, a sweet thought. Call somebody you haven't talked to in a long time or write somebody a thank you note. Uh, Connie Lane just did this for me. It was so beautiful. Gig at hers. Michelle Duenel also, who you've heard from today, she also wrote a beautiful thank you note to me. And those are so, so special and don't take a lot of money, do they? So it's not about doing something nice that's monetary. If you can't just be creative about how you do it, how you say your thank you. Okay. Or how you reach out to them and say, thinking of you, I love you or whatever. Okay. Do that something nice. It's going to just get inside you and you're going to feel so much better, even if you're feeling cruddy. Okay. And before I leave you, remember you're a magical being. That's what a human being is, a magical creature. If today sucks, you can draw a line in the sand and say tomorrow will be better. You're the only creature can do that. That makes you magical. All right, everybody. Love you a bunch. June says we love you, Terry. I will see you in October. You and the amazing Oscar, June. I'm so excited. Joe says everyone watch a classic movie this weekend. Yes. Watch a classic movie. I watched one the other day that was pretty awful. But then you say, at least I gave it a chance, right? Yeah. I have a, a, a playlist called Black and Whites where I watch all my favorite Black and Whites, my Betty Davis, my uh, uh, all my different ones that I like. I'm a big Greer Garson fan, so I have like seven Greer Garson films that I love. She's just an amazing actress. You know, she was box office poison for a while. Oh, I digress. All right, guys, you have a good one. Love you. Thank you, hugs for my dad. He's doing great. It's just a matter of getting him under the right umbrella. Yeah? All right. Mwah. Love you guys. Have a good one. Be well. Be safe. I'll keep you posted on Friday, but chances are it's going to be a week from Friday. Okay. Love you guys. Be well. Love it. Make me feel better every single day. Be well. Everybody.